Looking after someone with Alzheimer's can be incredibly challenging. It requires immense patience, compassion and dedication. And one of the key factors in providing the best care is ensuring good nutrition. Sister Duvanacher, thank you once again for joining us. Thank now, you. I know that you believe that nutrition is very important when it comes to this. What is your, what is your take on healthy foods? It's very important, like you say, you know, um, if our bodies are healthy, our minds are healthy. So it's very important for us to have a balanced and nutritious um, meals um, every day. So it must include all our proteins, vitamins, uh, starches and those kind of things. And yeah. especially like with what we have here is our omega-3 and 6s that are very good for us. So that's like the sardines, yes, yeah, the, sardines the tuna, the tunas, okay. you know, and then also our fresh fruit and vegetables that we need to have, our nice greens um, and also our herbs that are really good for our health to keep us healthy. And good fats. Oh yes, absolutely, those avas. We just love them, hey? <laughs> <laughs> they are delicious. And and brain food, blueberries, that's yes. a good one, isn't it? Yes, absolutely, yeah. your, your berries and our strawberries and our, all our other fruits as well. Sister, when it comes to your experiences that you've had with, with, your, with your patients, what does, the, what does the eating journey look like with a, a patient that's navigating dementia? Do they have a healthy appetite? What, is, what does that look like? You know, again, it differs from person to person, but we do get our healthy eaters, so we don't have any issues with them. They'll eat, um, you know, whatever we put them on the on the place for them. And then we also have um, our people that struggle to eat, you know, um, especially I think they they lose their sense of taste and, and things, uh, you know, as the journey progresses. But also then in, in cases like that, you know, we give them whatever they want to eat. So okay. then we don't I don't want to say it out loud, but worry too much about yes. nutrition. You know, whatever they are as long able as to take, eating. as long as they eat, it's it's important. So, sister, when it comes to that, you know, um, that must be quite challenging on the family as well. And I'd love to be able to tap into what does it look like when you are navigating dementia. Should one stay at home and be home based, or should one go to a care facility? What do you believe is the best outcome? You know, again, it's a, a personal decision at the end of the day. Um, we feel like we want to care for our loved one for as long as possible at home. And then we've got the resources like home-based care carers that can come in and, you know, assist with daily activities, um, performing personal hygiene and those kind of things. And then also, you know, you come to a stage where it's not really possible anymore to care for that person at home, um, irrespective if it's, be, uh, if it's physically um, because they're wandering around or or, you know, they become very bedridden, so it becomes challenging. And then you can put them in a facility. Um, you know, it's really a personal choice. With facilities, we have found that, you know, people with dementia, they like the routine, they like the structure. Okay. Yeah, eventually, you know, they settle in the beginning. It is a challenge. It, you know, they, they struggle to adapt. Yeah. But um, some, you know, they ease into it. And like I say, they like the routine. Yes. And in with facilities, you know, you don't, as a, as a family member, you don't have to worry about the care because it's being taken care of. It's 24 hour care, they make sure they take medication, look at their health, make sure they eat properly yeah, yeah. Um, and manage behavior issues as well. And I'm sure there must be some sort of um, uh, stigma that's attached to that. You know, like you letting your, your parent or your sibling or your partner go into a care facility maybe makes you feel a certain way. But the reality is that burnout is also real. And we spoke about that earlier on. Families must navigate intense burnout when they are navigating a family member that's going through dementia. So, I, I mean, I would, I, would, I would assume that someone being in a care facility almost opens up a breathing space for you to be more joyful when you see your loved one. Mm -hmm. Definitely, you know, and I think in general there's a stigma around dementia and we need to break it down. Yes. Um, you know, putting someone in a facility, you are acting in the best interest of that person, I think, and people need to understand that. Um, I know it's an emotional journey putting somebody in a facility, but, you know, when you put somebody there and they are being cared for, your role as the husband or the wife remains. Whereas when you look at them and you know care for them at home, you become the carer. You become almost like the baddie who wants them to do things that they don't want to necessarily do. Where in the facility, you know, there's people who, who navigate all that, and you can just be the, peer, you the, the spouse. Uh, yeah. With dementia, um, Alzheimer's in particular, sitting on the spectrum of dementia, as you were saying earlier on. How does one know what your person, your loved one is going through? Is there some sort of a, an assessment that someone can have? You know what, <clears throat> I think you don't know exactly what they're going through, but 
the more information you gather, you more get, you'll get a bigger picture of the changes that happens in the brain. Like I said, memory loss, they forget names, places, um, perceptual changes. So it gives you an idea, you know, when you walk into a room and you say, hi, mom, and she looks at you and it's like, you know, um, you're not familiar to me. You know, then you need, you, you need, you learn how to address those kind of things. Not take it personally. Not take yeah. it personally. And also, you know, hi, mom. And if you see she doesn't recognize you, say, you know, hi, mom, I'm your daughter, Madeleine. I'm here to visit you today, you know, just to make them also feel comfortable. Um, so you need to put yourself in their world. You need to understand their world. And we also yeah. always say, speak the language, the dementia language. What does that mean? To, to, that, that's, to mirror what someone else is saying? Like it's to it's understanding what they are going through okay. because of the changes in the brain. Okay. And then also, you know, um, don't give them a lot of information. Don't ask a lot of questions, open-ended questions. Speak in a nice, soft voice. Um, approach from the front. You know, those are very specific things. You know, I, I think even for us, it's daunting when somebody, you know, speaks behind you in this loud voice. You know, so just know how to approach them and how to speak to them. Yeah, have the information. Absolutely. And the knowledge makes the journey so much easier. Definitely. So thank you so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. As we've seen today, what we put into our plates and what we put into our environment and the information that we find out can make a real difference in supporting brain health and helping those living with Alzheimer's and their families in understanding everything better. After the break, we are making brain-boosting blueberry muffins that sound absolutely yummy.